All right, so we have talked about uh, modeling crown fire behavior, and um, today we're just going to kind of run through um, methods of quantifying our, our canopy fuels um, for really, really specifically for fire behavior prediction. Um, so we've seen uh, probably the two most important parameters in uh, the crown fire initiation and then ultimately spread are the crown base height. Um, Right, in, in terms of quantifying ignition, and then uh, crown bulk density is is important in terms of predicting our, our critical crown fire rate of spread. Right, so that was how fast um, would a crown fire need to, to move in order to um, essentially in order to you know, burn enough fuel to um, produce enough forward energy to to continue that active spread. So so we're just going to go through. Um, approaches of, of quantifying these canopy fuel parameters. So first we're going to start off with some, some definitions. Um, first, this, this sort of split here between uh, our language when we talk about uh, crowns. Uh, a crown is a, a tree level property. Um, so you can see, you know, you've got all these different measurements like the crown width, the, the length of the crown, um, height to the bottom of the crown. Um, um, and, and, and things like that. A crown base height um, generally refers to an individual tree, but I probably do it, and sometimes people use it a little interchangeably with canopy base height. Um, but the correct terminology really is that the canopy is when you're talking about a stand level property. Um, so things like the canopy fuel load um, isn't the, isn't the load within an individual tree. It's it's a, the load within the whole uh, the whole stand. Um, the canopy bulk density, same thing, it's, it's, it's a stand level property. And then canopy base height is, um, you know, is, is characterizing, you know, there are some different methods we're going to talk about, but, you know, some, some idea of the, the average of the uh, heights to bottom of crown or, or individual tree crown base heights um, are all aggregated into the, the ultimately the canopy base height. Um, but as I said, there's, this, this language is a little bit messy sometimes. Um, it's used incorrectly, and then it's also confusing that, that basically for historical reasons, uh, we talk about, you know, crown fires and crown fire behavior and crown fire initiation, and um, it, it, it probably would be more appropriate to call that canopy fire, um, but it's, you know, it's been crown fire for, for a long time before most of these terms started popping up and being used more specifically, so... A little bit of uh, contradiction there, but but generally speaking, we've got our, our crowns as a tree level and, and canopy at the stand. So some more definitions here. We have have our total biomass, or, or sometimes canopy fuel loading, um, or maybe even you know above ground biomass, um, which is really just referring to all of the biomass um, up in the canopy fuel layer. So so not our surface fuels. Um, and then we have this idea of the available canopy fuel loading, um, which, which as we, we've mentioned, is, is the part of the canopy we think um, would be likely to burn in a full crown fire. So those are the, the smaller fuels, so the foliage, and um, most common approach is the foliage plus half of the one hour fuels uh, gives us our, our available canopy fuel. Uh, canopy bulk density, right, that's basically the, the dry weight of canopy fuel per unit volume. Um, and then canopy base height, right? There's some different methods we can, we can get this thing, but this is basically the distance uh, from the ground um, to the, the base of our, our canopy fuel stratum. Um, you know, however, we're, we're quantifying that, um, that actual stratum, but that's, that's our or above ground, uh, or, or the base of our above ground fuel complex. Um, foliar moisture content, we've seen this one, right? This is just how much moisture is in our foliage. Um, and then the last one is this idea of a canopy fuel uh, profile. Um, so this is uh, really just a, a graph, right, showing us the vertical distribution of canopy fuel. Um, typically, we're, we're plotting the canopy bulk density at various heights. Um, so you can see one of those just right on the right there of uh, a theoretical stand, but um, it shows the distribution of the fuels. And, and so you can see there's actually a lot of fuels pretty low in the, the stand or low in the, the, the canopy of the stand. 
um, and that kind of jumps right out on these canopy fuel profiles. Um, so these are, are, are pretty useful um, in uh, in kind of quantifying and and sort of visually assessing our um, our stands and our distributions of of canopy fuels within that stand. Um, you know we can use them to compare different stand structures. Um, for example, this this figure here on the right, figure one uh, from from Reinhardt's paper. Um, we see these uh, these five different stands that were all measured, and um, you know it, we can really discriminate some some things about the structure of those stands just by looking at these canopy fuel profiles. Um, so it's it's helpful. You can see you know if, if there's a lot of fuel lower in the crown, or sorry, lower in the canopy. See, I just did it. Um, it's a lot of fuel lower in the canopy. Um, we're going to expect crown fire would be easier to initiate, right? Because because basically that's just telling us that 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 um, that canopy fuel is, is closer to the surface. Um, we can also you know do sort of theoretical treatments and and kind of compare treatment alternatives. So that's sort of what's happening on this figure on the left here. Um, so Blodgett is just one of the stands uh, from Figure One on the right. And so you can see the solid black line is sort of the pre-treatment untreated condition. And then we can do some different thinning treatments and we can see how that will affect our distribution of canopy fuels, right? So we could just do an understory removal and you can see that kind of just chops off just a little bit of fuel uh, down there low in the canopy. Um, and then we can do different levels of uh, basal area thinning. And, and basically it, it keeps knocking back the, the total fuel load or you know how basically how um, how much area there is under the curve really is our, our total fuel load but um, you, know, you can see we're, we're just progressively losing fuel um, and also maybe pushing fuel up a little bit higher in the canopy all right so how do we estimate these things so the first thing we're really interested in is it, right we got to figure out how much canopy fuel there is um, so there's some direct or you know we could measure this directly but we'd have to basically cut down all the trees cut their branches off and uh, you know weigh everything individually and um, obviously ton of work not feasible um, at any sort of scale and once you've gone ahead and done these measurements so well, you don't have a, a forest anymore so um, we really need to be able to estimate this stuff indirectly. Um, there's a, a variety of approaches, um, actually more approaches than we even have here on this slide, but um, there's some different instrument-based ones. Um, so using uh, you know some, some different ground-based sensors to get an estimation of uh, leaf area index. Um, and then there's some correlations with leaf area index to, to calculate um, bulk density and, and fuel load. Um, we can we can take some inventory approaches where we um, you know we measure some some subset we we measure some number of plots in the stand and then we can either use um, some individual tree equations to relate tree size to the biomass of the crown um, and then once we figure out the fuel load if you divide that by the, the, the measured canopy depth. Um, that will give us a bulk density. Um, there's also some regression approaches we're going to talk about. You can use inventory data um, on. And there's also this idea that you know people who uh, who have a lot of experience in the field and um, a lot of experience, you know, measuring and, and estimating canopy bulk densities, um, you know, could just give you a a reasonable number um, based on you know how how a typical say lodgepole pine stand um, looks or you know what the bulk density is. Um, right so something like this this is just just to kind of give you guys a, an idea of, um, of what these numbers look like and, and maybe some typical values for, for a few different forest types um, but basically right we can see our, our dug fir lodgepole pine forest Right, we've got some canopy base height, um, some crown height, or canopy height, um, canopy bulk density of 0 0.26 kilograms per cubic meter, um, and and so on. Uh, but so if you, you know somebody has a lot of experience and is just like you know what you can just use 0 
for that that kind of uh, a dug fir lodge pole pine stand. Um, and then you don't really need to measure anything. You can just kind of go ahead with your modeling um, based on that. You know, similarly to you might with a um, a pre uh, like a fuel model or something, right? You you just kind of uh, it it approximates uh, fairly closely what what that type of stand might might look like. So for uh, inventory-based methods, um, right, we, we take a ferrous forest inventory, uh, common measurements, things like, you know, trees per acre by, by species, uh, tree diameters, heights, uh, crown class, um, and crown base height. Um, and then we can, we can use those together with an allometric equation or, or a regression approach. Um, so, so Cruz et al., 2003, um, developed some regressions where you can predict canopy fuel load. Um, and actually canopy bulk density and uh, canopy base height uh, simply based on the number of trees per hectare and the stand's basal area. Um, and then alternatively, there are allometric approaches where we actually use the individual tree methods or measurements rather to estimate their biomass. Um, then we kind of, you know, sum this biomass up to see how much there is in the stand. Um, generally, these equations use some combination of DBH tree height and crown ratio. Um, so we're going to see an example of, of the most commonly used approach that's kind of being modified over the years, but um, is, is Brown 78. Um, I also thought I'd, I'd show up here. Um, so part of Seth X's uh, PhD work was uh, cutting down and taking apart a bunch of trees to build some, some of these allometric equations. Um, and so this is his equation here with um, basically that, that table there. It gives you the, the actual parameters depending on what you're trying to calculate, right? Whether you're calculating a, a dug fir foliage, um, there are different um, coefficients associated with the, the BO, uh, B subscript one, B subscript two, um, to calculate the, uh, the foliage load in, in dug fir, for, for example. All right, so Brown 78 is, um, is one of the more popular approaches. Um, it's it's kind of been modified over the years, but um, you know this was in was, was sort of the basis in uh, FVS's calculations of canopy fuels, and, and so we're just going to kind of go through how um, how you might use these particular equations to calculate canopy biomass. Sorry. Um, so, uh, so he has 11 equations for, for most of our common conifers. Uh, up here, I've got the equations for ponderosa pine and dug fir. Um, right, so in that table over on the, the right-hand side of it is, is basically the equations that will predict the, the total um, canopy biomass based on um, the, the tree, tree diameter. Um, as well as tree height and um, crown ratio. So basically what you do is first thing you calculate the total canopy fuel load um, or sorry rather at this point now we're back on individual trees so the total crown fuel load for an individual tree and then you split it up into its constituent parts um, and so the, 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 the method basically is that he took a bunch of measurements and, and figured out um, how the, the the size distribution of crown parts um, you know breaks down based on tree size really so we get our total weight and then we can start splitting that weight up into the foliage and then the small branch wood and then the slightly larger branch wood and then you know the, the really large branch wood um, and, right and the reason we need to break that up is is when we're thinking about crown fire uh, we really only care about you know the foliage and the fine fine branch wood um, but if you were doing something else like you wanted to predict or, or calculate maybe how much how much slash a treatment was going to leave behind um, when you're when you're doing um, when you're not doing whole tree harvest so you're just going to be leaving the crown tops in there uh, you want to be able to calculate all the biomass that you're leaving behind um, and so that's when you might use um, some of these measurements of the, the larger branch wood um, or just you know you want to quantify ecosystem carbon you need to know how much above ground biomass there is you know regardless of the uh, diameter of the the branches um, 
so these are these are some interesting plots um, just showing how uh, each of the species have different um, different crown loads and also different relationships with the different sizes of, of crown fuel. So on the left here, we see um, right as DBH increasing, um, you know, obviously we would expect as DBH increases that your the weight of your live uh, live and dead crown would increase. Um, and you can just see how how there are different species here, um, right? For example, the the ponderosa pine um, has a lot more a lot more uh, crown fuels than than um, just about any other uh, all those other species. Um, and then also, you know, there's some species specific differences in, in basically the fraction of the live crown that's composed in foliage versus um, zero to 2.4 inch branch wood and, and, and so on. Um, and these fractions of live crown are, are really going to be important because we're going to use those, you know, say you have a, a 12 inch tree. Um, you know, a 12 inch dug fir, and, and you can look on this, this chart here and basically figure out that, okay, a little less than, you know, maybe 35% of the, the crown mass is foliage. Um, so we just calculate the whole crown mass, and then we take out 35%, and that's going to be our estimate for our, our foliage mass. So there's a little bit of a simpler approach um, that you can use that, that Brown also put out where rather than having to do the equations and find the ratios and split up the fuel that way, um, he just applied his equations and, and made these lookup tables. So all you have to do is, is go and, and look the values up on a table. Um, so we're going to go through a quick example here of uh, finding the crown fuel mass for a 10 inch ponderosa pine. Um, so if we look here at the table on the right, so PP ponderosa pine is our first species, and then we go down the list down to the 10 inch DBH, and we will see that the uh, the estimate for our total crown mass um, for that individual tree is 171 pounds, um, right? And so that's including all of the the, the live um, needles and and branches of, of various sizes all total up to 171 pounds. Um, and then we can look up the fraction just in a table. Um, and so here's here's his table for the, uh, the foliage. Um, and so for ponderosa pine, a 10 inch ponderosa pine, the, the estimate is that 33% of it is foliage. So we just multiply that by our 171. Uh, so then we calculate 54.6 pounds of foliage for that tree. Um, say we do the same process for the one hour fuels, we look on our table, we find that 4% of a 10 inch ponderosa pine is in one hour fuels, gives us 6.8 pounds of one hour. Uh, same process for 10 hours, a lot more 10 hour fuels, 38% in the, the slightly larger diameter branches, uh, 65 pounds. And then finally, we can do that for our hundreds. 22% uh, are, are going to be in hundreds for that, that size of a tree. Um, and then finally, our, our, our thousands are, are really large branches. Um, and when you look at this table here on the right, you'll notice that uh, based on his measurements, a lot of these species um, don't ever produce, um, you know, any, uh, any really large three inch branches. So um, so for ponderosa pine, a 10-inch ponderosa pine, his estimate is that 3% of the mass will be in 3-inch uh, or larger branches. Um, comes out to about 5 pounds. So, so here's how that breaks down. And so now we've got an idea of um, you know, how that mass is distributed in terms of size classes within our crown. Um, right? And so if, if we're just looking at this in a sort of raw, like, you know, total mass basis. We've got 171 pounds per tree. Um, say we had, you know, we're in a homogenous stand with a bunch of 10 inch ponderosa pines. We got 150 trees. Um, you know, that gives us 2,500 uh, pounds per acre. We can convert that into tons. Um, and we find 12.8 tons per acre, um, basically of uh, above ground or really canopy biomass. Um, so, so far, this, this equation actually doesn't take into account the, the bowl uh, mass. If, so if we're really interested in, 
above ground biomass, we'll also need to estimate the bowl. Um, but but 2.8 um, tons of canopy fuel. Now, if we want to estimate the available canopy fuel, I, I said the most common method was to take the foliage uh, plus half of the one hour branch wood. Um, so if we go ahead and do that, we get 59 pounds per tree multiplied by 150 trees and then converted into tons. Uh, gives us 4.5 tons per acre of available fuel. Um, right, and so that's really important because we're going to use that to ca calculate things like bulk density. Um, and that also just puts a limit on how much energy would be released in a fire. Um, right, that's that's basically the fuel we would expect to burn. So the more fuel there is, essentially the, the higher our fire line intensity could be um, if, if a fire burned through the stand. So as I said, um, the, the Brown 78 uh, allometric approach is uh, really commonly used, built in the FES. Um, and um, I also didn't mention one additional thing with it is that there are there's an additional adjustment factor for um, crown class. So, so a dominant tree would be expected to have more fuel uh, at a given DBH than in you know, an intermediate or, or suppressed tree. Um, right, and that's that's because the dominant trees tend to have longer crowns um, and be able to sustain more foliage um, at, at that that given um, that given size. So anyway, um, not so recently, but somewhat recently, um, Reinhardt went ahead and did a little bit of comparisons of some of these different methods um, by destructively sampling five conifer stands. Um, and to see if maybe they could come up with a slightly slightly improved approach. Um, basically, they found that in their data set, the Brown equations were were over predicting um, over predicting canopy fuels by a pretty decent margin, uh, over predicting by 0 0.7 kilograms per square meter. Um, they also used the the Cruz equations and, and found a, a, a similar uh, over prediction. Um, and so what they suggest is is we need to use a little bit more of specific um, adjustment factors um, to account for things like crown class and also um, potentially you know the, the those relationships with crown class will depend on our site and our, our species mixtures um, so here are, are their adjustment factors for um, for basically adjusting Brown's equations to dominant codominant intermediate and suppressed trees in these different um, these different uh, forest types and, and the idea here is that, that you could go and, and match your site to one of these uh, forest um, types and sites and you could use the, uh, the crown class adjustment uh, based on this. So Cruz's equation, I just we just thought we'd uh, show you what it looks like. Um, this is the probably the simplest approach just because all you need is a stand density and a basal area and you, you can just plug it into his equation and he'll predict uh, crown fuel load for you. So um, right, the idea here is that he's given us these different coefficients and so we just pick our forest type, we, we plug in our trees per acre, our basal area, and we'll get a crown fuel load out. So once again, just as an example, um, example calculation using Cruise 2003. Um, so we can imagine we've got this stand that um, is a, a ponderosa pine stand with 272 trees per hectare and 33.2 uh, meters squared per hectare of basal area. Um, so we, we look at our table here and we find our, uh, our B naught or B zero uh, for ponderosa pine, right? Minus 3.592, we plug that in, we find our B one, uh, we multiply that by the natural log of the basal area, and then we add that to our B two times the natural log of our trees per hectare. Um, anyway, we go ahead and we solve that out um, to, to find, you know, based on their predictions, okay, this stand has 1.05 kilograms uh, per per square meter of 
Okay, so now that we've uh, taken a few different approaches of estimating the actual crown fuel load, uh, really what we need to get to for uh, predicting fire behavior, since, since this is the parameter that shows up in our models, is the actual canopy bulk density. Um, and so to calculate the canopy bulk density, ultimately what we need to do is figure out the, um, the canopy depth um, in order to basically divide the fuel load by the canopy depth to then give us our, um, our bulk density of available uh, canopy fuels. So there's a, a couple different ways we can do it. There's there's what are called load over depth methods. So basically taking our, our canopy fuel load and dividing it by the, the depth of the canopy. Um, there are some lookup tables where we just we just go ahead and, and look up what, what the estimated bulk density would be. Um, and then regression, which is just going to be the cruise approach. So in addition to having that crown fuel load equation, um, he also has an equation that just straight predicts the bulk density. So load over depth is pretty simple. Um, we've just taken our canopy fuel load and we're dividing it by the canopy depth and that will give us a, a bulk density. Um, but there's, uh, you know, how, how we pick the canopy depth or how we determine the canopy depth is gonna have a large impact on our bulk density, um, right? A smaller canopy depth means that that fuel is compressed in a smaller volume and, and the canopy bulk densities will be higher. Um, so there are a lot of different methods for estimating canopy depth and, and they're going to have a big impact on um, your calculated bulk density. Um, so one is we basically just take the mean of, of the crown lengths of all the, the trees in the stand to get our, our canopy depth. Um, and then we'll talk in more detail, but there's this idea of a biomass percentile method. Um, or, or the height percentile method, right? So mean crown length, um, basically right crown length is the difference between the, uh, uh, the tree's height and the tree's crown base height. Um, so we could just take the mean of, of all of these differences and, and calculate basically a mean level uh, crown length. So if we did that, um, that method here, say our canopy depth is 44 feet and our, our canopy fuel load was 100 or sorry 1.44 tons per acre we just divide those two things and we get a bulk density of 0 uh, 0.03 tons per acre foot um, right which we can then go ahead and convert all the way down to kilograms per cubic meter um, or pounds per cubic foot and, and we can see those values down there on the bottom. So that's the, the crown length method. Alternatively, we could use something called the height percentile method, where rather than using the average uh, tree height, um, we might want to use the 90th percentile tree height because um, you know doing the mean, you kind of discount some of their you know you're kind of ignoring the fact that well actually a lot of the canopy um parts, parts of the canopy might be a lot higher than that mean value um so if we use the 90th percentile we're, we're really putting a little more emphasis on the taller trees and that's going to stretch out our um our canopy depth a little bit um and then in this method often we use the median crown base height um right just to different kind of mean, not the simple mean, but the, the median. Um, and then finally, there's um, this biomass percentile method um, where um, really rather than focusing on tree heights and tree crown heights, um, we're going to just look at, at basically the vertical distribution of uh, you know, the, the, the fuel profile of where our canopy fuel exists. And we're just going to define the canopy um, depth as being between uh, where 10% where and 90% and of the available fuel loading occurs. Um, so we're just going to, you know, we're basically just focusing in on well, where, where that fuel actually is. Um, so if there's a lot of tall trees, it, it'll stretch up the top of the, the fuel profile. Um, 
and so rather than using some you know mathematical approximation we're just using these cutoffs based on uh, the fuel that that's actually out there in the stand um, you know you can do this by hand we could you know you could set up something with Excel or, or an R or something like that to, to do the computation yourself um, but uh, you can also just do it directly in, in something like FVS. Um, we'll, we'll calculate this method for us. As I said, uh, Cruise also has a regression approach to calculate canopy bulk density. So we just plug in our trees per hectare and our uh, basal area, and then the, the specific parameters for your stand, and it'll calculate a bulk density. Um, so uh, once again, there's the example for our ponderosa pine stand. All right, so then lastly, um, just a little bit more on the canopy base height. So obviously this is a really, really important parameter. Um, it's used directly in our equation to predict uh, the initiation of crown fire. Um, and then it's also, um, you know, built into those calculations we just went through of um, canopy depth and then ultimately uh, calculating our, our, our canopy bulk density. Um, so it's a really important parameter. Um, and how we decide um, to, to assign this value of canopy base height will have big implications for our, our, our canopy, or sorry, our, our, uh, yeah, our, our canopy fire prediction. Um, so yeah, we, we need to, to think carefully about how we um, determine this value. So in terms of definitions, you know, in, in one sense, it, it seems intuitive, but on another, it's uh, maybe not quite so simple. Um, so, so Van Wagner described canopy base height, um, right? So we're at the stand level here. This direct described canopy base height as the lowest height above the ground in which there's sufficient fuel to propagate the fire. Um, so maybe that's helpful but it, it's also like okay so what what is that how much fuel do we need to be there or, or how do we know if there's sufficient fuel to propagate the fire um and so a lot of times people just use the average crown base height um which in in some stands might work better than others um another common approach is to use the 20th percentile the lowest 20th percentile of all the crown base heights um so that'll that'll skew the, the the height a little bit lower um and then there's also an idea that maybe there's just some minimum bulk density that we want to use as a cutoff um, a popular cutoff uh, one that's used in fvs is this idea of 30 pounds per acre foot or 0 0.011 kilograms per cubic meter as a sort of cutoff bulk density like once we have more bulk density than that uh, well, that's where we'll consider the, the canopy to start. Um, anything other than that is just too low of a fuel to, to propagate, you know, too low of a, an amount of fuel to propagate fire. So uh, we'll, for our purposes, we'll kind of, you could kind of ignore it. Um, so this is just a, a comparison of, of, of the implications of these different choices on uh, some tree data from, from just a one tenth acre plot. Um, but basically the idea here is that if, if we uh, take the mean of, of the crown base heights of, of each of these trees, uh, that would give us a canopy base height of 4.2 meters, um, right? So what is that, like 13 feet or something? Um, so if, you know, we're predicting crown fire, we'd think, okay, well, you know, that's, that's, a, that's decent. That's going to take a, a pretty, pretty good sized flame to ignite those crowns. But then if we look at the lowest crown base height, well, there's a tree that has um, its, its crown starting at, at 1.9 meters. Um, so maybe we want to use that as our canopy base height, because if that tree initiates, um, maybe it'll be capable of, of just laddering the fire up into the crown anyway. Um, and then the, the 20th percentile in this case works out to be 2.1 meters. Um, so clearly our, our method choice is going to have have a big implication on uh, potential uh, you know our predictions around crown fire behavior and then finally if we wanted to use this idea of the the minimum you know bulk density cutoff uh, we need to generate a, uh, a canopy fuel profile 
and then essentially uh, just draw a straight line on it and, and find the height at which we reach our, our bulk density cutoff. Um, so there's this older Sando and Wick value um, that, that was basically just a made up number. They said that, um, you know, that, that seemed like a, a, enough fuel um, in their minds to propagate fire. And so that was kind of the cutoff they picked um, a bit high, higher than, than the more, more recent number that gets used in FES. Um, and basically if you use Sando and Wick's method for this, this example stand, um, we would say that there is no canopy base height because there's not enough fuel here. Um, so that's maybe not a good number to use, but if we use this newer 0.011 kilogram cutoff, we basically find a canopy base height of 4.3, um, right? That's the first height at which we have enough fuel. And uh, in this case, interestingly, that actually works out to be the same or, or very close to uh, if we had just taken the, the, the mean of, of crown base heights. So, um, but anyway, so that's, that's the other method we could use here. Um, and, and I think maybe makes some more sense just because it has some sort of like a physical basis, like, hey, there's got to be some amount of fuel here for it to count as the canopy fuel stratum. Um, then again, you know, justifying these numbers is maybe not as well supported. So, um, so anyway, um, it's good to think about. And I would also say just in general, um, especially if we're, if we're thinking about predicting ignition, um, in, in the context of maybe a, a fuel reduction treatment or something, um, it probably makes sense to be conservative, uh, and conservative in this case means assigning a lower canopy base height, right? If, if we, if we pick a method that, that maybe makes an unrealistically high canopy base height, uh, we might think that our stand is going to be a lot more protected against crown fire than it truly is. Um, so, so especially in cases where our stand is maybe heterogeneous, so there's some lower crowns and some higher crowns, um, you know, picking some a, a conservative method, maybe something like that, that lowest 20th percentile, um, or potentially this uh, this bulk density cutoff um, might might make more sense. And then Cruz, in addition to calculating fuel load and bulk density, his regression can also be used to estimate a canopy base height. Um, I don't have an example of the comparison here, but here are the here's the equation um, to, to use from, from Cruz. Okay, so um, so what did I talk about today? Well, we went through uh, a lot of our common terms to describe the canopy fuel complex. Um, we saw uh, canopy fuel profiles and how they can be used to both uh, compare stands and then um, they can also be used to to identify um, canopy bulk or sorry uh, canopy base height. Um, we saw some different methods for canop uh, quantifying the canopy fuel load and the bulk density, um, and then you know very tightly related is how we estimate canopy base height um, because canopy base height has implications for both our prediction of initiation and then it also impacts our calculation of the bulk density. Um, so sort of indirectly is going to impact our, um, our equations for predicting crown fire spread. Um, so there you go. There's our, there's our quantifying the canopy fuel complex.